Hello, my name is Moses Ganadi, and I would like to give a talk on the knapsack problem over wreath products. This is joint work with Pascal Bergstresser and Georg Zetsche. The topic of this paper is decision problems over groups. Let me give you a gentle introduction into this topic. So the setting is that we have a group G, which is usually infinite, but finitely generated. This means that we have a finite set of generators sigma. This means that we can represent group elements as words or products over sigma in its inverses. The most basic problem in algorithmic group theory is the word problem. Here the question is whether a given word w over sigma in its inverses is equal to 1 in the group. This problem was first introduced by Max Steen in 1910. It is known that this problem is undecidable in general, which was already shown in the 50s, but for many groups and classes of groups, there have been decidability and complexity results. In this paper, we look at a more difficult problem, which is the knapsack problem, defined and introduced by Myashnikov and co-authors. Here, the input is a list of group elements g1 to gn and g, again given as words over sigma and its inverses, and the question is whether they are numbers x1 to xn, such that g1 to the x1, g2 to the x2, and so on, is equal to g. The name knapsack comes from the fact that if we use the group of integers, then the knapsack problem is precisely the problem of solving linear Diophantine equations. We can also consider more general knapsack equations of this form, where between the powers gi to the xi we have the constant elements hi. And it's not so hard to see that we can transform such more general um, knapsack equations into the form above. But sometimes it's more convenient to use this form, in particular because we can assume that the right-hand side is equal to 1. The questions that we ask are, are for which groups is knapsack decidable, and also what is the complexity of, of knapsack. In this paper, we focus on the decidability question. Now let me give you um, a brief overview over other related algorithmic problems over groups. So the knapsack problem can also be formulated as this membership of G in this rational expression G1 star, G2 star, and so on. Certainly, the word problem needs to be decidable so that knapsack is decidable. A variant of knapsack is called subset sum, and here the question is whether we can find these exponents which are a binary, either 0 or 1, so that g is equal to this product. Other problems which have also been studied are the subgroup membership problem, is g in the subgroup generated by the gi, and the submonoid membership problem, is g in the submonoid uh, generated by g1 to gn. And all of these problems can be subsumed by the rational subset membership problem. And here the input is an automaton A, where the transitions are labeled by group elements. And the question is whether there is an accepting run where the um, transition labels uh, together form the group element G. So knapsack can be viewed as a particular instance of the rational subset membership problem where the automata have this um, restricted form that they form um, a chain of cycles. So knapsack has been studied implicitly before, in particular for um, matrix semigroups. So here the matrices do not have to be invertible. There's this um, old paper by Babai and co-authors uh, where they study the problem for commuting matrices and then also later papers have studied the general case. Now for groups, knapsack is, knapsack is known to be decidable for a large uh, class of groups. So for, instance, for example, um, it's known that hyperbolic groups is um, knapsack is solvable in polynomial time. This was shown in this paper by Miashnikov and um, others where they introduced the knapsack problem. And also for other problems, uh, uh, groups like uh, the discrete Heisenberg group, virtually special groups, and free solvable groups. This is not a complete list of, of all the results. Also, it is known that there are certain um, preservation theorems, which prove, so for example, that if a group has um, a finite index subgroup, 
and knapsack is decidable for the subgroup, then it's also decidable for the supergroup. So decidability is preserved under finite extensions. And then there are other similar results. Now in this paper, we look at a particular construction from group three theory, which is the so-called wreath product. This is a fundamental construction, which is very important in group theory and also in semi-group theory. So this is also relevant for computer science people. In particular, algorithms for wreath products are important because um, they are a way of providing algorithms for free solvable groups. It is known by the famous Magnus embedding that every free solvable group can be embedded into an iterated wreath product of free abelian groups. So here's a definition of the wreath products. Assume we have two groups G and H. Then first we need to define the set G to the H, which is the set of all functions F from H to G, which have finite support, meaning that only a finite number of elements from H are mapped to the non-identity. Then the restricted wreath product of G and H consists of the set of all pairs f, h, where f is such a function. So such a function can also be viewed as a finite labeling of h, together with a special element h. And the multiplication is defined as follows. If you have two pairs f1, h1 and f2, h2, then we multiply uh, on the right simply by h1 times h2. And on the left side, the new labeling f is obtained by taking f2, shifting it by h1 inverse, and then multiplying it, it with um, f1 pointwise uh, from the left. Okay, here's a more intuitive um, view on the wreath product. Let's consider the example of z2 wreath product with um, z squared. So we take the group of uh, two elements together with uh, z squared. Now this wreath product acts on the set of all um, 0, 1 labeled grids, where only a finite number of cells are labeled by 1, and it has a distinguished cursor in the cell. Now this group is generated by this generating set consisting of the generators of the, of the grid, so that's, these are the two unit vectors, and the generator of z squared, which is just, just 1. Now these generators can be viewed as operations on this grid. So the generators of the of z squared allow you to move around the cursor, whereas the generator of z squared allows you to operate or multiply on the current cell. So roughly speaking, a wreath product can be thought of as uh, moving a cursor in, in the Cayley graph of H. So here the Cayley graph of z squared would be the, the grid, the Cayley graph of z would be just, just a line. And we can also multiply elements from G, this is the group on the left side, into the current cell. Okay, so what do we know about um, algorithms or decision problems on wreath products? For example, for the word problem, it is known that um, it is decidable for a wreath product of G and H if and only if the word problem for G and the word problem of H are decidable. So this is a nice result which which basically splits up the, the problem into the two factors. For other problems, the description isn't as nice as for the word problem. It's known, for example, that the conjugacy problem for the wreath product of G and H is decidable if and only if the conjugacy problem is decidable for both G and H and the power problem is decidable for H. This was shown by Matthews in 66. Now the question of course arises whether we can provide a similar characterization for decidability of uh, knapsack over wreath products. And it is known that decidability of both factors does not imply the decidability of, um, the, of uh, the knapsack problem over the wreath product. So this means there are, pro uh, there are groups G and H where knapsack is decidable, but over the wreath product, knapsack becomes undecidable. So the aim of this paper was to characterize the groups G and H for which um, knapsack for G with H is decidable. So for the rest of the talk, we will make some assumptions. The first assumption is that G is non-trivial because otherwise the wreath product would simply be H itself. And also we can assume that the right group H is infinite because otherwise the knapsack problem over the wreath product would be equivalent to the knapsack problem of G to the power of H. 
Also, we know that um, the knapsack problem over um, G and H must be decidable, since they themselves can be embedded into the wreath product. But furthermore, since we assume that H is an infinite group, we can actually embed all powers G to the M for any number n, M, into the wreath product. And this allows us to encode equation systems into uh, the knapsack problem over G wreath H. So formally, this is the problem denoted by x eq over g. So this is solvability of exponent equations for g. Here the input is a system of exponent equations. And an exponent equation is just like a knapsack equation, but the variables xi may repeat. And the question is whether the system has a non-negative solution. Unfortunately, it's also known that even if we assume that um, exponent equation over g are solvable, and knapsack is decidable for H, still it could be that knapsack is uh, undecidable for the wreath product. So it turns out that we actually also need to uh, define a stronger variant of knapsack on H. And this is the contribution of this paper. We introduced two new decision problems called the intersection knapsack problem and the positive intersection knapsack problem. And we denote this by Kp plus minus and kp plus and we show that these problems characterize when a knapsack is decidable over a wreath product namely as follows the knapsack problem over g wreath h is decidable if and only if exponent equations over g are solvable and then we have to make a case distinction whether g is abelian or not so if g is abelian then the positive intersection knapsack problem over h must be decidable and if G is non-abelian, then the intersection knapsack problem is decidable. So what, is, what are these two problems, intersection knapsack and positive intersection knapsack? So suppose we have uh, such a generalized knapsack equation over H. Then a solution can be thought of as a sequence of walks in the Cayley graph of H in the following sense. So we start in the identity one, and then we read the first prefix, which is g1 to the x1. So we read this by multiplying g1 to the current um, element. So we obtain 1, g1, g1 squared, up to g1 to the x1. This is the first walk. The second walk is obtained by prolonging the prefix even more. So we, have, we start in g1 to the x1 and multiply by h1. And then starting from that work vertex, we multiply by the powers of g2 and so on and so forth until in the end we have evaluated the entire knapsack expression and because it's a solution we know that we will reach the uh, element one again. Now intersection knapsack allows us now to make certain conditions on these walks. Namely we have loop conditions and disjointness conditions. Here loop condition is a pair i, j and says, it says that the walk pi1 up to pi j forms a loop. So basically it says that um, the point where pi i starts is the same as the point where pi j ends. So we can say that certain points in the knapsack expression must be the same using a loop condition. A disjointness condition is also a pair i, j and it says that two walks are disjoint. They do not have any common element. Now, the intersection knapsack problem is the problem given a knapsack equation and a list of loop conditions and a list of disjointness conditions. And the question is, is there a solution for the knapsack equation which also satisfies all the loop and disjointness conditions? And then we define this restriction called the positive intersection knapsack problem, denoted by Kp+, which only allows loop conditions and no disjointness conditions. So here is the relationship between the problems discussed in this paper. So we have knapsack, which is uh, a special case of knapsack, positive intersection knapsack, which itself is a special case of intersection knapsack. Also, we can reduce positive intersection knapsack to exponent equations, since every loop condition is basically an, an additional uh, ex exponent equation. We know that all these problems are um, 
uh, well, we know that positive intersection knapsack is strictly stronger than knapsack. Exponent equations are st strictly stronger than positive intersection knapsack. But we don't know whether we do not know whether intersection knapsack and um, the positive variant are actually um, equivalent. So this is the main result. And for the rest of the talk, I want to give you a rough um, proof sketch and also provide some uh, applications for concrete groups. So the direction from right to left, so the direction which solves the knapsack problem over the wreath product, is based on ideas from previous works. Roughly speaking, we need to guess how the walks in H intersect and which, which walks do not intersect at all. And this can be guessed and then verified using the oracle to the intersection, intersection knapsack problem. Now this intersection pattern gives rise to a partition of the walk, of this solution walk, and every subwalk then defines an exponent equation over G. In, in total, we get a system of equ equations which we can solve using the oracle to uh, XBQ of G. Finally, we need to observe that if the group G is abelian, then we actually can omit the disjointness conditions, so we only need the oracle to uh, Kp+, plus, the positive variant of intersection knapsack. The more difficult and also more interesting direction is from left to right. In particular, we need to show how to encode loop conditions and uh, disjointness conditions in knapsack over the wreath product. And this is what I want to illustrate over the next uh, few, in the next few minutes. So let's assume we want to encode a loop condition. In the simplest case, we just have a single loop condition. So we have uh, an equation like this over H, and we want to say that a particular infix is a loop. So it evaluates to one. Then what we do is we take some non-trivial element A from G and write down this equation over the wreath product. So this can be visualized as follows. We start in, in the identity, move by E1, write A into the current cell, move by E2, write A inverse, and then move again by E3. Now this element is equal to 1 if and only if A and A inverse cancel, meaning that E2 is actually a loop. Now how can we simulate disjointness conditions? So here we need to assume that the group is non-abelian, meaning that there exist two elements A and B which do not commute. Put differently, uh, A, B, A inverse, B inverse is not equal to 1. This is the so-called commutator of A and B. Now we want to express this that these two walks are disjoint in four rounds, namely as follows. First, we traverse the first walk and write into every cell the value A. Then we traverse the second walk and write the value B. And then we do this again only using the inverses. So we traverse this first walk with A inverse. And this cancels all these points which are not on the intersection point. And we traverse the second walk with uh, B inverse, which again cancels all points. Only in the intersection point we have this commutator which is not equal to 1. So this picture now becomes 1 if and only if the two walks were disjoint. Of course here, because we traverse these walks twice, we need to enforce that they actually line up. And this can be ensured by adding further loop conditions. So now these two simple examples showed you how to um, simulate a single disjointness condition and a single loop condition. Now, of course, if we have multiple conditions and also possibly both loop and disjointness conditions, the situation becomes more difficult and the simple approach um, would fail. For example, if you would have two loop conditions which are violated, then they could still cancel out each other as you can see in this picture. And so roughly here's um, some ideas that we use in the paper. Instead of using a single marker to, um, for, for the loop conditions, the loop conditions write loop words, which are more robust. And also, if we have a violated disjointness condition, we don't just produce a single commutator, but multiple commutators. And finally, we need to ensure that elements from violated conditions do not cancel out each other. So this requires a subtle construction 
and the details can be found in the paper. So for the rest of the talk, I want to um, provide you with some applications of this result to concrete groups. So most groups where we know that knapsack is decidable, in fact, have semilinear solution sets. And such groups uh, we call knapsack semilinear. So a group H is knapsack semilinear if for every knapsack equation over H, the set of solutions forms a semilinear set, which is uh, effective. So we can compute a semilinear representation from the equation. Now for such groups, knapsack is clearly decidable because we can test emptiness of semilinear sets. But even we can decide um, intersection knapsack because we can encode loop and disjointness conditions in Pressburger. So this allows us to prove the following result, which was already known, that if H is knapsack semilinear, then the knapsack problem over G with H is decidable if and only if solvability of exponent equations is decidable over G. And this covers most of the groups where we know that knapsack is decidable. Now what about groups where the solution sets are not semilinear? So one of these groups is are the so-called um, solvable baumslag solitar groups, BS1Q. And so they are defined by this presentation by the generators AT with the defining relation TA, T inverse is equal to A to the Q. Still, it's known that um, the knapsack problem is decidable. In fact, it's in NP. And the proof goes um, by encoding a knapsack equation in Büchi arithmetic. This is a decidable extension of Pressburger arithmetic. Now, if you look into the proof, then you can see that loop, dis uh, loop and disjointness conditions can also be expressed in the logic. And this shows then that the intersection knapsack problem is decidable for BS1Q. And therefore, the knapsack problem for wreath products of G with BS1Q is always decidable if and only if the solvability of exponent equations over G is decidable. Now there's another group for which we know that knapsack is decidable, namely the discrete Heisenberg group. So this is the group of all three by three unitriangular integer matrices. And it's also known that the solution sets can be non-semilinear, but still the knapsack problem is decidable. Now for this group, we can actually prove that the positive intersection knapsack problem is undecidable. This goes by a reduction from Helbert's 10th problem. And therefore, by our characterization, this implies that the knapsack problem over wreath products with the Heisenberg group is always undecidable as soon as the group G is, is non-trivial. Now, using this result, we can actually cover all wreath products, G wreath H, where H is virtually nilpotent. So virtually nilpotent means it is a finite extension of a nilpotent group. Virtually nilpotent groups form a an important class by this famous theorem by Gromov, namely that uh, the finitely generated groups of polynomial growth are precisely the virtual nilpotent ones. And it is known that the Heisenberg group is, in a certain sense, the smallest finitely generated virtual nilpotent group, which is not virtually abelian, so which is not a finite extension of an abelian group. And using these facts, one can prove the following. If G and H are finitely generated non-trivial groups, and H is a virtually nilpotent and infinite group, then the knapsack problem of the wreath product is decidable if and only if H is virtually abelian and exponent equations over G can be solved. So basically this precisely characterizes all wreath products where um, knapsack is decidable in the case that H is a virtually nilpotent group. So let me conclude with a few open problems. It would be nice to find reductions from knapsack to uh, the intersection knapsack problems and also vice versa with better complexity bounds. Also, it is unknown whether there is a group H where the positive intersection knapsack problem is decidable, but the intersection knapsack problem is undecidable. And finally, all groups where we know that exponent equations can be, can be solved are actually knapsack semilinear. It's unknown whether there is a group G which is not knapsack semilinear, but uh, still solvability of exponent equations over G is decidable. Thank you.